So to start this off, I am using my camera on my phone because my other um, camera, the memory card, I'm transferring some files. And so this part is just a really basic part. I'm just going to basically sketch out the neck and face of a, a peacock. And I, uh, when I did this pour, I did it with the intention of actually painting in the peacock face because I am a peacock lover. So um, I'm going to leave the majority of this the way it is. I may add a little bit more colors to it. I'm not sure yet. But I need to put the body in. And the way this is going, it kind of leans itself towards the face being to the right and I found a perfect little picture on Google of a peacock a photograph and I wanted to sketch out I'm hoping this white chalk pencil will work but it may not it may not show up very well let me get some just regular chalk mm -hmm. okay I think I have pretty much the shape that I want and that I'm going to put white paint on this so that I can really make this pop from the background. When you have darker colors and you need to paint over it, you want to make sure that your base coat is going to be light enough to where it doesn't, the colors on top don't get deepened. And the white is the best way to go. This is gesso. I could use white acrylic paint. Uh, I just need a white background to start with. I had done some koi fish on a, an acrylic pour a while back and I think people thought that I had transferred it onto the canvas somehow but they weren't sure how I did it because I didn't show actually sketching it out I just showed the white koi fish on top of the the pour that looked like water and then I painted the koi fish in over the white but this is exactly what I did with the koi fish. I just took my acrylic pour and after it was nice and dry and cured and cleaned, you don't want any silicone or anything, no residue, then I did the same thing that I'm doing now. I just base coated in that white really nicely for the koi fish and then I just painted in the details after the white was dried. I don't have a, a brush that can get down to a fine point, so. I don't want this nose or beak to look too hawkish, but they do have pretty substantial beaks. I think I'm going to expand that head just a little bit. make it just a little bit larger. I'm going to use a lot of metallics. This is going to be a fun painting. With white, it takes multiple coats on dark colors, so you have to kind of layer it up. And if you're not careful, it can lift off if you keep going over it. See how I, I don't know if you can see in the camera phone or not, but from the angle that it's at. but. Um, if you keep going over spots and it's wet already, it will lift the paint right back off. So that's something you have to always be aware of. Okay, so I see here that the neck, I sketched it out where the body needs to come out a little further than I had it. I'm going to bring, so make its neck look longer and bring its chest out a little bit further. And then down here I'm going to blend this blue body in with the rest of it. And I may even 
I may even add some colors in up here on the pore itself to, to give it a more realistic feel with the peacock feathers. I'm not sure if I'll leave the pore the way it is or just concentrate on the head and body and leave it at that. So it's thick enough right now where I can't do much more till it's dry. Now I'm going to put a second layer on to really make it white. Give it a more solid white look because you can see a lot of brush strokes which is very typical on dark paint. Just want a really good coverage before I paint in all the detail. I have painted several realistic looking peacocks in the last 20 years and this is one's going to be neat because I want the face and neck and head and you know, body of it to look really kind of realistic but I'm not sure if I'm just going to leave the feathers to give it more of that that part to be more abstract and obscure so we shall determine as we go it's very easy for me to want to go into realistic mode totally because that's the way I've painted the last 20 years and that's the beauty of acrylic fluid art is that it's not realistic and yet it's just as equally beautiful. So that's a really thick coat of white. So that should be good to go. That was Deco Art Media Gesso. You can use any gesso, but that's the one I used there. Let me use my damp paper towel and remove the chalk part so that doesn't show up anymore on the edges. And then I'm going to take pencil. I'm going to take a pencil and just roughly sketch in where the eye is. I also have my iPad here for reference so I can see it a little bit larger. I'm going to use mostly Arteza and then I'm going to mix in some metallics. So I think I'm going to base coat this blue in while I'm waiting for my memory card to transfer the files. So this is cobalt blue and basically I'm just going to get a good coat of blue on the bird I like Arteza. It's very rich and the pigments are fabulous and it's a little bit on the creamy side. So it works really well. And then I'm going to try to see Ultramarine. The Ultramarine Blue. Use some of that. These are just fabulous colors. The Ultramarine is going to be much richer, darker. And I'm going to do some some of the deeper blue around the outskirts of the back of the head and neck. This is where the depth comes in. I'm not going to talk, I'm just going to keep on painting. Pearl Sapphire Blue. I'm going to try this out here and see how metallic it looks. So I can't say that it looks super uh, metallic -y against the blues. The blues are so vivid, I just don't think it really makes a difference. So now I'm going to try. This is Sapphire Extreme Sheen by DecoArt. 
I'm going to try it out and see how it looks. It has so much more sparkle. This has, it looks like really refined miniature shimmer in it like, um, looks like glitter. So yeah, this looks about like the same color that's already on the canvas, but it has that shimmer to it, which is nice. For shading, I'll have to go back over it with the um, ultramarine blue, which is so vivid and deep and beautiful. So this does give it some shimmer. So, I've, at least I've got some shimmer going on now on the bird. Like I said, I'm going to have to come back in with the ultramarine blue and give it some depth again. Okay, and then there's green on the face. So I have a metallic green here by Artist Loft. This is lighter than what I need, but I'm going to go ahead and use it for the, oops, for the initial coat. We've switched from my phone that was on the side. Now we're overhead, so you can see from above. And I think what I'll do is zoom in a little bit. That means I need to move my peacock up a little bit. I've got my iPad here on the canvas for reference. I've got my little pictures from Google. I'm going to keep on painting. I'm not going to talk. And then I'll, uh, when I'm getting close to finishing, I'll turn the mic back on.
Okay, I think I'm done. So here is the finished peacock that was the original pour. So, it's got the metallics pretty much in and around all over and then I'll have a clear coat that I put over it and it'll be done, it's signed and ready to roll. So, I love it. Of course, I love peacocks and I think they're some of the most beautiful creatures. So, um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to make a donation to PayPal or join my Patreon account, be a patron and get some perks and insider videos and things like that, um, please join. So I appreciate you following my journey and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.